This is the United States. And this is Vermont. Uh, okay, where is it? I know it's small. Magnifying glass. Okay, let's see here. No, that's Washington. Mm, Texas, no. Iowa. New Jersey. Ooh, we're getting close. Ah, there it is. Vermont. To the west, you have the state of New York. To the south, Massachusetts. To the east, you have New Hampshire. And to the north is Canada. Stop, stop it. Stop it. This video is not about Canada. Vermont is unique because the majority of the population actually lives in rural areas, not in populated cities. And when I say cities, Vermont doesn't really have any cities. You can have about 10 people in a parking lot and have a pretty good fight for one of the largest cities in the state. But since we're talking about cities, quote unquote, the largest city in Vermont is Burlington in Chittenden County. Only 42,000 people live in Burlington. The second biggest city is South Burlington with only 17,000 people. It is also home to the headquarters of Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. Mm, maple Blondie. Oh, oh, oh. Ice cold. In third place is Rutland with only 16,000, then we drop to 9,000 at the town of Barrie, and then before you know it, we're at the state capital, Montpelier. After that, towns pretty much fall off the face of the earth to just a few thousand to a few hundred. Now for some quick facts. It's always fall in Vermont. Nice! Vermont was the first state admitted to the Union after the original 13 colonies. Hey, whoa. Hey, can I like, uh, can I like join you guys? Oh my gosh. It's also home to the smallest state capital in the country, a state capital with less than 9,000 people, Montpelier. Speaking of Montpelier, it's also the only capital without the golden arches in it. Weird. Vermont was also the first state to outlaw slavery. And by population, Vermont is the second smallest state in the United States, only to Wyoming. <laughs> That's right. About 630,000 people live in Vermont. That is it. It also means there's only a 0.9% chance that someone from Vermont will actually see this video and comment. So how does a state that's so small have so many weird town names? I don't know. Don't look at me. I'm just going to go through the list. Let's begin. The first thing you need to know about Vermont is they seem to have kind of a, well, a thing for naming towns after places around the world. So let's kind of get all those out of the way right now. We have Moscow in Lemille County. <laughs> Egypt in Franklin County. Meep. Athens in Wyndham County. Jamaica in Wyndham County. Peru in Bennington County. Kansas in Bennington County. And really, this list could keep going, including Rhode Island Corners, Baltimore, Brooklyn, Michigan, and Holland, to name a few. Then there are a lot of town names with biblical origins, such as Sodom, Canaan, and Jerusalem. There are actually two Jerusalems in Vermont, one in Starksboro and the other in Rochester. Next, we have Callis, Vermont, in Washington County. It is pronunciated as Callis, and not the French way of Calais, even though it's named after the same city. Within Callis is the town of Sodom, as we had mentioned earlier. Oh, well... Sodom doesn't exist anymore as a village. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. The name was changed to Adamant because the citizenry was adamant that their town wasn't a sinful cesspool. Strike one! Why did the town used to have the name Sodom, you say? Well, it's because they didn't have any churches. In 1905, the citizens petitioned the state to have the name changed to Adamant, and they were adamant about it. Strike two! 
Following Sodom, we have Gaysville in Windsor County. In 2011, after Hurricane Irene, Gaysville was one of the towns isolated by flooding. Up next, we have Satan's Kingdom in Addison County. It seems fitting to have a town with such a horrific name be in a beautiful location along the shores of Lake Dunmore, with the green mountains providing a serene backdrop. The town got its dark name due to its rocky soil, which was unsuitable for farming, and still is. A good way to end up in Satan's Kingdom is to kill Ington. Strike three! You're out of there! Killington is located in Rutland County and is home to the Killington Ski Resort, which is a popular resort with locals. Hopefully it didn't get its name from the deaths of skiers. Even stranger, the town was once called Sherburn, but in 1999, residents voted to have the name changed to Killington. I'm not sure why they would choose this name over Sherburn, but maybe even stranger, if that's possible, is that Killington residents have voted twice to secede from Vermont and join the state of New Hampshire, which is 25 miles away. Yes, they voted to be an exclave of New Hampshire twice, meaning that they would be surrounded by Vermont, but they themselves would be New Hampshire. Killington certainly is a weird place, but I certainly can't call them lazy. Lazy Lady Island in Franklin County. It is a small island located in St. Albans Bay. While this isn't a town, it is a geographical feature worth mentioning. I wonder if early Vermonters sent lazy women there as punishment. It's also located next to the equally strange named Camp Kill Care State Park, all with K's. So anyways, Vermont seems to have this really bad habit of not telling people how their towns got their names. <sighs> so, I don't know how the town got its name. But, I do know it's a private island with some private homes on it, so don't go there unless you're invited. Smuggler's Notch in Lemiel County is a geographic landmark separating Mount Mansfield from the rest of the Green Mountains. Mount Mansfield is the tallest peak in Vermont at only 2,170 feet. Smuggler's Notch Resort, aka Smugs, <laughs> is also located here, and is a popular winter sports enthusiast's haven for things like snowmen, architects, and snow angel aficionados. And next on Grand Island, surrounded by the shimmering waters of Lake Champlain, we have the town of North Hero, named after Ethan Allen of the Revolutionary War. Then down Grand Island, we have South Hero, named after... <laughs> something else, I'm sure. Thanks for nothing, Vermont. Up next is Dummerston. Dummerston? Dummerston, in Wyndham County. It is home to the longest covered bridge in Vermont that is still in use. We follow that with Beanville in Orange County. There's no coffee shops in Beanville. Actually, there's not much of anything. And when there's nothing around, I'm sure that's considered blissful to some people. But Blissville isn't as quiet as Beanville. Blissville in Rutland County is home to a marble quarry, which is part of the smallest union in the United States for marble workers. Skunk's Misery in Franklin County. One can only imagine how many skunks have lost their lives here. Skunk's misery, where skunks go to die. Then we have Podunk in Wyndham County. People don't even know they pass this Podunk town on their way to Mount Snow Resort. Tinmouth in Rutland County is a rather small village with a collection of historic buildings. But let's be honest here, the whole state is historic buildings with weird town names. Am I right? The town of Orwell, not the birthplace of George Orwell, in Addison County. This town is full of itself, like... <laughs> Truly. Their history is all about how high and mighty they are. No joke. This is part of their history. <laughs> Take a seat. This is going to be a while. This town is a joke. Quote, Orwell enjoyed a time of peace and prosperity after the war's conclusion, Revolutionary War, marking a time of great emotional uprising and town glee. However, these bright times would be marred by several major tragedies that coincided with the attempt of industrialization of the area's farmlands in the 1870s, when several young men lost their lives to a thresher accident. 
A, a thresher accident? I mean, I'm sorry, but a thresher accident, okay. This tragedy has keenly been remembered by the community, which banned all industrial farming later that year in a special town meeting. Industrialized farm equipment was only allowed back into Orwell after the economic collapse of the 1900s. I wonder why they had that collapse. And even then, special restrictions were placed to limit the capabilities of such farm instruments. Like... Who wrote this? Who wrote this town history? <laughs> and believe it or not, to this day, the town still bans modern farm machinery of all kind. Whew. All right, but it gets better. Other big news for Orwell is that they tried to allow a fast food chain to open shop in town, but the other villages in the township voted this down, claiming it would ruin the beauty of the countryside. Seems like this town is stuck in the past if you look at it from the surface. They also claim they are the Fortress of America and hearken their town motto as First in the Revolution, First in Recreation. Eesh. <laughs> Let's get out of here. And welcome to Mosquitoville in Caledonia County, named because of mosquitoes. And now the community of Lost Nation in Essex County. I would love to know the history of this. My guess is it has something to do with the Native Americans, maybe a lost nation of their people that once used to be there, but in true Vermont fashion, there is no history. Come on, guys. How is it these early... I thought these places kept record of this stuff. Okay, next one. And here is Breadloaf in Addison County, named after Breadloaf Mountain and home to the Breadloaf Writers Conference. Back in the day, Robert Frost attended this conference. And to end our list of the weirdest town names in Vermont, we have No Town in Essex County. Aptly named because there's no town in No Town. And with that, we end our list of the weirdest town names in Vermont. I can definitely say that this state, probably per capita, has the most weird names of any state in the Union. What was your favorite town on the list? If you have other town names you'd like to share, post them below. And as always, thanks for watching.